attaching this body, this personality, then all these things come. That I am a Brahmachari, I am a Sanyasi, I am a Grihi, I am a Bra Brahmana, I am a Kshatriya. So many other things comes right from there. When it is not, then what happens? When all these things goes away, when I say I am, then what is that I? The always some these connections. I am a doctor. I am a professor. I am so and so. All the connections with what? With this body. This body-mind complex and along with that all this association is all temporary. So Vedanta teaches us negation. No, no, no. It's called in Sanskrit neti, neti, neti. Not this, not this, not this. <coughs> and reaches to that perfect knowledge. That is called nija, bodha, sarupaha. Bodha, that knowledge, personification. I am the personification of that knowledge. The Lord Buddha, when he was asked by his son, what you have achieved? I now know who am I. So that is the ultimate. But we cannot explain that. No one can express that after that knowledge. What happens after that knowledge? Two things only. There is no fear and complete joy, constant joy and happiness, peace. So you have to prove that you have reached to that knowledge by these two. Completely fearless and full of joy. So this is called the Vedanta. So after the negation, now Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he said when you negate that I am not this, I am not this, I am not this, and then you go to that particular knowledge. Then you come back to this world, to this manifested world. What do you see? That you have become all these. And to explain we can say that God has become all these. We were searching for God. And we go to this building, we go to this person, we go to this, we go to that. No, 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 these are not, these are not. Then ultimately we go to the God and we are very happy. And then we see all that we were negating is nothing but the manifestation of the same God. And different form, different name, they were there. So that is the, that is called Sri Ramakrishna is the big jnani. Sometimes some people may think that when they, we, Sri Ramakrishna is telling, Ekhankar je obhigyata anubhuti ved vedanto ke chhadiye gache. Sometimes people may say, oh, this is the way of, the statement of proud. You know? How can people say that even he has gone above the Veda? What is Veda? This Veda is the experiences of the Rishis. And when the Rishis were meditating, they were good, keeping their mind completely calm and the reflection of that knowledge came and that they have given down to their, their disciples or noted down. That is the Veda. Sri Ramakrishna also is much above the Rishis. Because he was also not only realizing, he was leaving in that. And then coming down from there for the betterment of the others, he is telling that that those things which you say, I am not, I am not, I am not, is a manifestation of the same consciousness because this is the highest point. Except that consciousness whom you call Brahman, there is nothing else. So we talk about the Vedanta, Vedanta, Vedanta. What is that Vedanta? 
one of the disciples of Swami Sri Ramakrishna, he was reading Vedanta, the Upanishads. And to understand the Upanishads, you go for all the, you know, the argumentative things and uh, Bichara, they, they call Brahma Sutra. And the Brahma Sutra by the Veda Vyasa and the explanation by Shankara. So this Brahma Sutra also and all these things, he stopped visiting Sri Ramakrishna, the God himself. Why you read Brahma Sutra? To realize God. And a person, he stopped visiting God because he was busy studying the Brahma Sutra, I mean Vedanta. Then one day Sri Ramakrishna noticed and he was very fond of that boy and told why he is not coming. And now he is busy, he told that visiting over there is a vestige of time, so I am studying the Vedanta. But tell him to come once at least, I like to see him. So he came and he told, what is there in your Veda? What is there in your Vedanta? Brahma Shatta Jagan Mitya. That's all. Shankaracharya said. Sloka Ardhela Pravakshami. In a half a slok, I can tell you. Which has been saved by its soul, Grantha Koti Bhi. There's a millions of scriptures that they have said. I will not half a slok. What is that? Brahma Shatya Jagat Mitya. Then, the second line he said, he is telling, Jiva Brahma Eva Na Apara. Jiva, all the manifested beings, Brahma Eva. Eva means truly the Brahman. Na Apara. They are not others, anything. They are that. So this is what called Vedanta. In brief, in short, it's called Vedanta. One gentleman, uh, he was asking, the, I have a newborn son, I like to keep his name. What name I will keep? <coughs> I don't, there are so many good names are there you can keep. No, every name in our family should begin with CH, Cha. Right? Chanchal, all this thing. Then I told him, eh, jokingly I told him, Keep the name Chaturtha. <laughs> oh. Chaturtha means the fourth stage. Now this is called Vedanta. Chaturtha is the fourth stage. What is that fourth stage? Now Jagrat, Sapna, Susutti. Three stages. We are discussing about the Vedanta. How we learn Vedanta? They say it is the Consciousness. How will you understand the consciousness that is there? So you have to go through that this is the beauty of the Hinduism. They never say it has been said and you believe it. It has been said in the scripture and you have to believe it. If you don't believe, the society will come down on you. No, not like that. You have every right to judge. Bichara, atha bichara kartabya. They always say, Atha, now, Bichara Kattyabhya. We have to discriminate. How you will discriminate? They say like this. There is consciousness. How can you say there is consciousness? Now, you are now Jagrat. Jagrat means conscious. And your three things are working together. Body, the mind and consciousness are alert. Body is also alert, mind is also there, receiving and consciousness. These three stages, three things are there. So we okay. call that particular thing as a consciousness. So that we all know because all the time we are having that consciousness. Then another experience we always have, that also we are aware of, very interesting, that's called Swapna, that is, we are dreaming. When we are dreaming, of the three things, one is completely absent and two are active. What is absent? Who can say? 
three body mind and consciousness and that is called jagrat and now in the shapna in the dream stage one is absent what is that body, body. <coughs> so we are sleeping so the body has nothing to do mind is active so mind is seeing different things and when i am seeing the dream i never see the dream i see the reality when i am in the dream stage i never think that i am in a dream stage it's a reality when i see that a tiger is coming in dream is it real i oh no no i am dreaming no problem <laughs> not, not like that when you can say that oh i am dreaming that that means you are not dreaming yes you are aware so in the consciousness that stage jagrat i am alert all the body with their all chakshu karna nashika jiva tapa the senses all the five senses are alert i go and test and feel oh this is bitter oh this is sweet all my senses are active so that is mind body and we don't know but something is there consciousness it is present now we are going to reach to consciousness through argument how to understand the consciousness is there first is jagrat second is the swapna third is susupti they have given the sanskrit name dream less sleep that is the best time for us no thought in the mind no disturbances at all the body is taking rest body and mind now totally separated the mind is completely individual and taking rest mind is not cognizing anything imagining anything visiting or seeing anything then i come back from that particular stage and i say i was sleeping and i enjoyed my sleep how could you say because mind was absent body was absent then who could say that i was sleeping and i enjoyed my sleep in the jagrat body and mind shopna only mind susupti no body no mind still something was there which recorded that i was sleeping very well and i came back this is the argument to prove something is there which we call atma which we call consciousness and that is very important if that is not there nothing remains now i always give this example that the the bulb is here and the tube light the fan the microphone different names different forms right but something is there in all of them which is common that is electricity but we don't see the electricity we see the bulb is giving the light different shape different color we can recognize those things and we forget that the main thing the electricity if it is not there the beautiful nice the bulb and all nothing will work the beautiful body but if the consciousness is not there we are going to body or to burn as a very intelligent person if the consciousness is not there is of no use he is dead so this way we always call that jagrat sapna susupti and from susupti we are always coming back 
everyone is going to that stage, coming back, telling that I was living without any dream, but at the same time, we cannot remain over there permanently. We are coming back. So that is the reason there is another stage called Chaturtham. The fourth stage. Chaturtham is fourth. And that is Samadhi. When that stage we go, here, without knowing, without our self-effort, without the practice, each and every one of us are going to the Susupti stage, enjoying that. That is also Samadhi stage. Because the mind is not active at all. Body, forget about body. Mind is not active at all. And beautiful, that is the joy. So that proves when there in the mind, no waves are there, no thoughts are there. We are in joy. So what is meditation? It is a conscious effort to reach up to that Susupti stage. That's all. Now some people will say, close your nostril and do this and do that. Well, okay. But in Susupti every day I am going to that stage. Only now consciously if I learn and practice, I go to that stage and never come back. I am there. And when I like, I can come back. When I like, I can go over there. That is called Chaturtham. They could not give any explanation. They could not say anything else. Only they say it is the Chaturtha, the fourth stage where consciously you are going. Not in dream. Not in sleep. And that is process is called meditation. Now again there is another, they call it Triputi Veda. This is Vedanta that we are discussing. The ultimate knowledge of Vedanta is the consciousness. Now how can we prove the consciousness? This is the first stage. And second they say Triputi Veda, that is the practice that we have to do to acquire the, that knowledge. You know, the Shiva, this is always the story that goes in the, in, in the Hindus, they always make a high, the philosophy, and they start a story in that, so that they can understand. And there were three demons, and they were creating problem, because they had the capacity to fly from one place to another place. They were having the whole kingdom that was floating, flying. It was so difficult to catch them because they were moving here and there all the time, changing their position. So that all the gods, they went to Shiva and said, you are the only person who can do, please kill that three brothers, three demons. So they are having three townships, we can say, and with that they are moving and as because they can move, they are going and creating problem, torturing the people and go, then going back, somewhere, hiding. So Shiva went and he was waiting. When the three of them came in one line, he threw that, uh, the, what's called the arrow, and it pierced through the, all the three at a time. That was the story. If you like to kill, you have to kill all the three brothers at a time, otherwise you can't. Some people misunderstand and say, oh, Hinduism is full of violence. <laughs> look, look at the gods and goddesses. Everyone is having so many arms and, uh, and all the time fighting, fighting and fighting, killing, killing and killing. It's a full of violence. Many people, they say. Some of the Hindus also don't understand that. Look at the Buddha quietly sitting. One person commented, in place of Krishna, if Buddha was there, there would not have been any Kurukshetra work. It's a situation. Now, it's very difficult to tell these people what is Buddha and what is Krishna. Now, this, all this that we see, 
is all the is a story in the story form what teaching actually giving that is triputi veda triputi what is the tri triputi gyan gyata and gyan gyan knowledge gyata the student who is trying to get that knowledge what gyan the object what is the object the gyan is the object what is the object god and through the knowledge only it reaches to over there not god say consciousness say brahman so the knowledge is there i have to acquire that knowledge and then i reach over there but these students they are studying they have come from far away places and they are studying one day they will become the professors or researchers or they themselves will write books so people will read those books how now they cannot do anything why they are acquiring knowledge and the goal is to get that knowledge in such a way so that they can reproduce that knowledge in much better way so that way only we are progressing someone did something over that you research and then another one step ahead and then go then go that way only education is what when we step by step we are going someone is coming but if there was no knowledge at all now we are developing different ways of the the wheels so that the car can move and there will be no jerking and all that that primitive man when he notice that a stone is rolling down and when the stone is round it rolls down faster and that knowledge and he utilize that knowledge and that's why we are getting all the wheels now we cannot deny that man oh he was such a fool he never knew all of us would have been the fools like if he didn't think in that way so naturally the knowledge is so knowledge this is very important who is studying me the student so when i am studying that for what purpose to become that to become that knowledge this is vedanta very bold and we we go to the temple from distance we see the god can you ever think that i like to be with that god no we cannot because the environment and all the people will say no 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 you are from different and that is also true there is also a philosophy they say like that but the vedanta teaches that knowledge is still within you you have created that god If you go to the South Indian temples, the color of the gods are mostly black. If you go to the North Indian temples, color of the same god is white. If you go to other places like Nepal, always the eyes and just like the Nepalese, we create the god, and now we are afraid of god. <laughs> we create and we are afraid. Why? because we impose some qualities in god and say if the god is angry he will punish me and who is that god now that way slowly if we understand bhagavata is a book which is telling about the life of sri krishna completely that is the bible of devotion bhagavata is the book of devotion but the fast word that used by the veda vyasa janmad yasya yata all that you see has come from this and what is that is nothing but the consciousness and same consciousness has taken the form of krishna human form as krishna why so that we can understand 
So here also, Jagrat, Sapna, Susupti, then Gyan, Gyata, Gya. It's called Triputi Veda. We are life after life, generations after generation, we are going to the temple and giving the donation the same way and we get nothing. <laughs> the generation and tradition is terrible. So one, I went to a place and I told that I want some donation. See, they brought only uh, some few coins, not even one rupee, uh, say the one rupee. I told mm, this much, oh, this is our tradition, you know. My grandfather's father, they used to give only, I think grandfather's father, that time one rupee was very costly. <laughs> now the value of the money that you have to, I told, oh, is it? That, that is very good. But calculate according to the value. That time, that one rupee, what was the value? That value will have give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so like that. They are taking the, keeping the tradition, only that, but forgetting about the value. If they know, not that they don't. Well, very safely they can save their money. But this is the way we are cheating ourselves. We are going to the temple, we are doing the puja, and we are very sincere about it. If anybody is not doing, we are criticizing also. See, he is not devotee. That way everything is going on, but what is the purpose that you don't know? We always go to have some security from the God as an insurance type. I am giving you puja every week or every month I am coming. In exchange, there should not be any accident, there should be any... All these things, you should protect me. That is, of course, in the beginning it is all right, but ultimately you have to go to Gya. That you go to God and become that, Sri Ramakrishna. He started worshipping puja as a devotee, as a pujari, as a bhotari to Kali. And slowly, 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 that Sri Ramakrishna is called Triputi Veda. What he did, he himself became Goddess Kali. And there is no difference be between the Kali and Sri Ramakrishna. Long afterwards, when he was ill, he was getting prepared to leave his body. He was in a place called Shampukur. One day he asked his devotee, bring all those things, we will have Kali Puja. Devotees they brought, and you know in the Kali Puja, Hindus, they have the time, etc., everything fixed. At that time, Sri Ramakrishna went into deep meditation and there was no uh, consciousness in his body. Uh, we, those who have read the biography of Sri Ramakrishna, you know, he used to go into deep meditation, that's called Samadhi, and the body was only the body and nothing was there. So the devotees were wondering, what we will do now? In the meantime, Girish Chandra Ghosh came. The people used to call him as the Vishasha Akar. Akar means the ocean. He was the ocean of faith. <coughs> he came and told, hey, why you have not started the puja? The time, this particular time is going away. The time is passing and you have to finish that puja. But where is the Kali Murti? There is no Kali Murti. The Thakur, lovingly we call Sri Ramakrishna as Thakur, Thakur asked us to bring all the ingredients that we have brought. Now there is no image and Thakur is in Shamadhi. Now how to do the puja? Grish told, you are all fools, can't you see that this is Kali sitting before us? And he took the flowers, Jayama Kali, he offered that to Sri Ramakrishna. And Sri Ramakrishna's body, shook and then went into deep, deeper meditation. And they could see that in his person, God is Kali. Mathur Babu, the person who is to support Sri Ramakrishna, Mathur Babu was wondering, Sri Ramakrishna was pacing up and down and there is a court here, Mathur Babu was sitting in his 
the baranda of his own building. That's called Kuti Bari. All the landlords used to have their own building. So that's called Kuti Bari. And they were there, he saw the Sri Ramakrishna facing up and down. And he was thinking, this man is a villager. And I'm considering him so much and doing so much. Is it, I'm, am I doing all right or what? Just an ordinary Brahmana and I am respecting him so much. Then suddenly, the moment that the thought crossed in his mind, he saw Sri Ramakrishna going one side, Shiva, and going other side, Kali. This is Jnana, Jnata and Gnana. The Jnana, what is that Jnana? The knowledge. The Kali that you see in that form is nothing but the knowledge. And the same knowledge I like to acquire. And through austerity, through concentration, when I reach over there, I also become that. Sri Ramakrishna always is to keep himself very humble and is to say, I don't know anything. But he himself was Kali. Many of the direct disciples, they say it like that. When he passed away, when Sri Ramakrishna passed away, Ma Sharadamani Devi, his wife, she cried out, Ma Kali go, why you have abandoned me? Ma Kali, to me, kanu amai chhede gele. Why you left me? If she never said Sri Ramakrishna, or the husband, she said Kali. So Gyan, Gyata and Gyan, these are the three, that's called Triputi Veda. All our effort as a devotee is to reach up to that. Then what is the Vedanta? They call Upanishad Pramana. And in the Upanishad, we always find in the Upanishad, talk about Brahman. Upanishad never say anything else but Brahman. Upanishad never say don't tell lies, don't hurt others, nothing. Much below if you go, then only these moralities are coming. And Hindus, they made in this way, first is ritual, morality, then spirituality. Upanishad speaks about the spirituality. Step by step we have to go. And when you are studying the Vedanta, the Vedanta never speaks about morality also. That you should go and give on charity or you should tell, should not tell lies and all that. It's all morality. You are supposed to practice that. When you are studying the Vedanta, we are expecting, the teachers are expecting that you have already completed those things. Only Taitri Upanishad, which teaches the students, they said Satyam Bada, Dharmam Chara, Swadvaya, Apramadi Tabhyam, etc., etc. You must tell the truth always constantly, stick to truth. Dharmam Chara, whatever your responsibility, your duties, you must perform it perfectly. And you should not ever give up your study, must study. Because the brain, if you are not studying properly scripture, afterwards you won't be able to understand it. So you have to keep the brain very sharp. When you are studying many different things, reading the newspapers and this and that, that won't do because you have to prepare your mind in such a way when you are studying the scripture, scripture your understanding. That is also, that's what they call apramaditabhyam. When you are studying the scripture and you must be very, very attentive and you should get the joy after studying that. And that's called sadhana. So they say at least one page you should study every day. Now here Upanishad is the Pramana. Upanishad is the Pramana of the Vedanta, Veda. The Upanishad Vedanta, 
What is Vedanta Upanishad? In the Upanishad, what do you find? Ishavasya midam sarvam yat kincha jagat tyam jagat. Everything that we see is nothing but that consciousness. But that is called Upanishad. Always talk about the consciousness in different way. And so many different Upanishads are there. Different rishis at different time, in different language, expressing the same truth. Consciousness, consciousness, consciousness. Sir Shami Vivekananda said, each soul is potentially divine. How he said that? Because of the Upanishads. Because of the truth that the rishis realized and expressed. And he himself also realized. That's called a Kakri Ghat, one place called Kakri Ghat in northern India. Almora, many of you must be knowing, the Almora and in the Almora district there is a place called Kakri Ghat. There's a beautiful river is there and a peepul tree. Recently that particular tree died, another tree they have planted. The peepul tree and the sitting under the peepul tree when he was meditating, he discovered this truth which the Rishi said. When his brother came, spiritual brother, the uh, Sri Ramakrishna's another disciple, Gangadhar Maharaj, and he said Ganges, he used to call him as Ganges, because Gangadhar, so Ganges. Mm. Ganges, I have solved my life's problem, Vivekananda said. Life's problem, what is that? Whatever is there in the whole universe is present in this body. The I am that. So this consciousness is called Vedanta and this is what Upanishad is always proving. Well, and next uh, we will slowly discuss about this Vedanta and Sri Ramakrishna in uh, next. Now it's almost 8.20, 8.30. So if you have any questions you can please ask. We will go in this way. One hour we will discuss and then yes. half an hour question answer and then we will go. Okay. So we have a microphone so that the world can hear what you are asking. Mm -hmm. So if you raise your hand, this gentleman will take the phone. Uh, so You better ask a question mm. because you are already having it. Thank you, Santi. I had one question. Have you turned it on? Yes. Okay. Yes. Swamiji, I had one question. This question uh, originates from the fact uh, that uh, we have had very, many, very spiri uh, enlightening spiritual texts. Uh, a few of us uh, of those texts are probably not there with us. Uh, I uh, read about uh, those. So uh, taking cue from that uh, and extending uh, that thing further, my question would be, is uh, the future of our society a planet? We are just one small dot in the notion of many, many planets. Is the future of this Brahman, this whole universe set, pre-decided? We might know, not know of that already. But is it pre-decided? And in case it is pre-decided, then what would be the responsibility, the duty of people like us, given that the future is pre-decided? I couldn't get you. So pre-decided means what? What you are thinking? So uh, the predetermined. Uh, sorry. For example, uh, a universe also. Us, I mean, I am a uh, physics student. I don't know how much physics I know, but I'm a student of physics. So frequently, physicists say that the universe, well, it started from one point, it would come back to one point. Uh, big crunch, we say that. In that case, well, uh, the future of our universe is predetermined. So given that future of a universe, this is like universe at large, rise and fall of civilizations also. Hmm. If that is also predetermined. In such a context, what should be the responsibility of... Oh, your question, yeah, yeah, now I can. Uh, if I am not mistaken, that 
predetermination and our effort, self-effort, right? Yes. So if it is everything is predetermined, then why should we try? That is the question, right? Uh, so see that everything is predetermined. Don't one little kid came. It was hungry. The baby was hungry, but it was not crying. And that's why the mother was also happy not giving food. <laughs> Then I told that baby, you have to cry, otherwise you won't get. The mother is ready, food is there, but she forgot. You know, the program is going on, so she was very happy. And from the morning the onwards, but slowly, slowly, the baby was becoming, you um, know, the weak, wanted to sleep like that, like there's some... So it was predetermined that food will be given. But little self effort is also there to get that food. <laughs> So by that way, everything is predetermined, but we need to have that. That's as Jesus said, knock the door, it will be open unto you. Unless you knock the door, you won't be open. So it's all the time, everywhere, you have to have the self-determined thing, but you have to effort, self-effort is also necessary. There's a beautiful story to explain this. One day, the Lord uh, Vishnu was very angry with L Narada. And then another story, the Narada is a great soul and he was there all the time with the Lord Vishnu. Holy soul. And as it always happened when you were constantly living with someone, so sometimes we make some mistakes, have some fun. So Narada was having said something about the Vishnu and Vishnu became angry. Hey, what is it? Why you should say it like that? You have made a sin, you have committed a sin, so you have to go to hell. Narada was taken about, my God, why? Now what I will do? But he was intelligent also. He said, Lord, right from my birth I am with you. I have heard about the hell, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> How I will go? Then the Vishnu, as it goes, and he started drawing on, on the, over there. So this is the Swarga, you should go like this, and this is the place which is hell. So he was pointing, putting his finger like this. Now Narada immediately rolled on that place and got up and said, Now I am free. So what free? You Lord Vishnu, when you put your finger and say, this is hell, that particular place become hell. So I have completed. So that effort, everything is there unless you do. So your question, if it is predestined, why should we try, right? So now you are potentially divine, but unless you try to open it up, it will never. Now you are an intelligent boy, I am supposing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are, I am sure. So, so, in that, now you are studying hard, going to the professors, studying books, taking notes, writing this, and also you're, you are using your own brain for what? Knowledge, right? The knowledge is already there. Why you have to have that effort? So now if you don't mind, one American gentleman, he was accusing his Indian friend that because of you people have come over here, we are going to college. Otherwise, we are very happy. <laughs> After school level, we are happy and then become doing the work, earning money. And because of you have come, a competition, so we are forced to go to college, university, learning, what is there? So like that, even if you don't go to college, you can survive. But if you learn, then you survive in a far better way, much better way. That is self effort You will survive. That is predestined. Suppose you become a doctor, you will survive up to 80 years, predestined. If you, suppose you don't become a doctor, you will survive up to 80 years, predestined. But if you become a doctor, your survival right from 30, 35 years up to 8 years will be great. 
Otherwise, it will be little difficult and hard work. So this is called predestined and self effort Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone? Yeah. Thank you, Samaji, for the talk. Uh, I think during your talk you emphasize that we, we all do karma in some sense and there are four paths, we understand that we have. But in, in all the ages, there are some certain things which were given more emphasis and from there on, it, that's the ritual part came, right? We started to emphasize more on the ritual. If you ask me, uh, who is more agnostic, and a person with more agnostic sense, he, who has never generally been part of those rituals, but I've seen my mother, father, and everybody else doing that, I, I've started to realize that we, we, in some way, forward the real goal, and we only started to take that ritual part to mo give, give, and give it more importance. But then you, when I was reading the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali also, and you also mentioned about the meditation piece. So the goal is important, let's say, and we can call it God, we can call it Brahman, we can call it the infinite, the pure consciousness. But isn't the journey, the real journey of which takes us to that final goal is very important here. Should uh, I have seen in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, they emphasize far more on the meditation aspect of the thing than anything else. Even the Yoga Vashisht, when I was reading Yoga Vashisht, they also said the self-effort and meditation part is very important. And the rituals and all, even Vedanta said that these are mere tools and they are kindergarten of spirituality. If you start there, it's great, but if you end there, then it's unfortunate. So can you explain more on the aspect of uh, meditation, how important it is uh, compared to the other rituals part that in the current generation, people and I see temples and all have become more like it's it's like every other week you are going there just to pay some homage that yeah I am part of temple and I am part of all that ritualistic point of view but people should be giving more emphasis on meditation in their daily lives. That is true. So that is the, you know that uh, if you say what is the necessary to go to school even in the house also I can study and can become knowledgeable. Like the Rabindranath Tagore never went to school because he never liked the schools. You know that poet, so and very rich man's son, so when he went into classroom and he saw the, all the walls and there's only one door and you cannot go out till the class is over and he used to feel that the walls are standing as a guard and we cannot, we are in the jail and we cannot go out like that, like that. So he wrote a poem on that. So afterwards, Teachers used to come to him and he studied, he became Rabindranath. But it is not possible for each and everyone. School is necessary, environment is necessary, friends are necessary. And slowly, one step by step, have you seen the, how the kindergarten goes? If you go to the teachers, oh my God, how, what patience they are having. The little kid, he won't learn, he in his own way looking this side, that side, but the teacher is going on telling, giving these and that, slowly, 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 slowly coming up. So life is also like that in spiritual life. So you have to go fast and then you have to offer pranam, then you have to learn this, you have to learn that. Step by step you are making progress, otherwise you won't. So we cannot simply say ritual is not necessary. Ritual of course necessary. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna himself wished to practice the ritual. Swami Vivekananda also did that. All, each and every one, Ma Saradamani Devi was full of rituals. The ritual is there, but at the same time consciousness, why I am doing this? The only this thing. Why I am doing this, if that is there, then that particular action which we call rituals for the God, that gives us the real knowledge and happiness and joy. Otherwise, suppose I am going to school with a bag full of books and sitting over there from 6 years to 60 years constantly and people will say, oh, the great student. 
and see that almost 54 years constantly he is going and sitting in the same classroom with the same book, will they say? No, because I am taking the books and sitting over there, but I am not getting those knowledge within me and transforming me. The transformation is necessary. Majority of the our religions, they stuck to that. You have to go to the church every Sunday, then you have to kneel down like this, then you have to go and touch this and that. Uh, but why? This is the Jesus flesh and this is the Jesus blood, you take this. Uh, but, but the question is why? If I do and what happens to me? Am I becoming a better person? Same way the temple, the people will be going and the meeting the all these way are going on, on and on. The grand people and the grandparents and the parents and the I am also going. But why I am going? Even in America, highly qualified people, they are so fond of making the constructing the temple and big, big, huge temples are coming up. Then they will bring the priest from, because who is going to worship? The other things we can do, but the worship, so special people. So from India, they are bring, bringing this priest and they are here, the salary and there. Whole thing is going on. Then afterwards, you go and see the person. What he will say? I constructed the temple and now they have removed me from the committee. I am not going over there. I will show them. I will construct another temple somewhere else. But what is the purpose of constructing the temple? One gentleman came and told the Swamiji, I was here for such a long time in this temple. I was the president at the time of president. I made this road. I made that. I made that. And now they are giving the bad names to me and they have removed me from there. I am not going over there. I told Acha, tell me, first day when you came to the temple, you were just a devotee. Out of curiosity you came. Some <coughs> people constructed the temple, you came. And then you went to God, right? Huh? You were, why you went over there? Now I love Sri Ramchandra. This is Ramchandra's temple. Okay. Still the Ramchandra is there. The first day when you came, came with love, for Ramchandra and now you don't like to go to the temple but Ramchandra is still there. <laughs> Why don't you go? So that knowledge didn't grow. Rather, when he came in contact with the power, just little bit of power, what is there? And whether, what type of puja will be there, these, there, little bit of things. And because of that he became so proud. You know, that is the hindrances. <laughs> When this man is progressing in the spirituality, Sri Ramakrishna said, you have to pray, Mother, please reduce my responsibility, reduce my work. I like to call on you. That's why Sri Ramakrishna, one should read the gospel. If you read regularly, all this idea, complete, clear about the religion, that our ritual is necessary, without ritual we cannot do anything. As the school is necessary, without the school and the curriculum we cannot make progress. But that is not the final, over that also we have to go. So, but Swamiji, that's what you said, that's the school, but it's, it has its place and time. Yeah. I did my 5th grade, I did my 10th grade and I moved on from there. I didn't stay there at the 5th mm -hmm. grade. What I see that people stay at that fifth grade itself in comparison to the ritual. Ah. Isn't it high time that we have started to realize that that learning what wherever 10,000 years ago, 30,000 years ago, how many years ago we started all that, maybe that was required at that time. In today's age, maybe the concept of the whole uh, perspective of ritual and temple should be given in only that much importance where, where it is required. But then in these times, we should be emphasizing the meditation part of the things also from Vedantic perspective that exactly. this is a very important aspect which you should not forget. If you don't do ritual it's fine but if you don't do meditation then it's not up to the mark. That's something. And that, that is actually, that is the reason Shami Vivekananda 
he started uh, Vedanta Society in the West. So the Vedanta Society he started not only that, in Ramakrishna Mission we have an Advaita Asam. Ramakrishna Mission is a fully ritualistic thing that <coughs> are going on in Belurmat. The you know the first time I went to Belurmat I I was drinking the water at the time of lunch. I was holding the glass in the left hand. I was drinking. Then one Swami came and told, Hey, why you are holding this? Then this is not the you must hold like this. Right hand. So like that. And ritual you cannot imagine the way they do. But at the same time, same Ramakrishna mission is having Vedanta society, Advaita Ashrama. That same Swami Vivekananda he established both. Why? This is the whole gamut of the Hinduism. We start worshipping the stone. That is the God. And then from there we come and say, Aham Brahmashmi. I am that God. So, you know that we have to, human beings are very intelligent about the worldly knowledge. But the moment you talk about the spirituality, they are very much, just like the child, they say, whatever you say. Well, I will tell you that the funny thing that happened in Delhi, we went for book fair from the Advaita Astam. That's the publication center. And a Prakriti Maidan book, perhaps you have seen the Prakriti Maidan. And the book fair of the air. Indra Gandhi was the Prime Minister. Indra Gandhi, uh, you know, that you, her mother was our initiate disciple of Ramakrishna Mission and Kamala Nehru. Indra Gandhi, when he was very young, she used to come to Belur Mart, etc. etc. A very good relation was there. The when she came to inaugurate that, they took her on the first floor. They didn't bring her our side. The many many shops were there, stalls were there. So she went over. There. Then we were looking. This Indra Gandhi came and saw like this. Who are the others below? And she noticed Sri Ramakrishna's picture. We were hanging the picture. From there she saw. I could read that she is looking at that and offering pranam. Then I told our Swami in charge that she is going to come to visit our stall. He told, no, there is no chance, the Prime Minister, our programs are fixed. We Indra Gandhi were in Indra Gandhi. So, she came down from uh, the staircase which was not actually clean even. So, the, she came down through that and came straight to our astrama, I mean stall, and offered pranam to Thakur, the picture. We gave her some books, she also purchased some books, etc., etc. Indra Gandhi was very popular. And the moment she left, now the people started coming, and they, is this the stall where Indra Ji came? Yehi hai na? Bas, ame bhi ek kitab de Indra Ji, kisne koon sa kitab liya? Ham bhi lenge. They came just because Indra Gandhi came and there was a big crowd and we were enjoying the selling books. <laughs> and exactly opposite, there was another uh, group of people, they were there. The, uh, if you don't mind, the, I can tell the Krishna consciousness, the, the ISKCON, they were there. They were, all books are there. but. People are not going there. What, what I, We are not inviting. People are coming of their own because Indra Gandhi came. We never invited Indra. She came of her own. But these people become very jealous. And they started playing very loudly, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and placed that microphone towards us. <laughs> and now suppose it is their, their stall is this, and our stall is this. If this is much... And it was so difficult even to talk to people and to stay over there and whole day. Then one day it was all right. The second day I requested the authority, please stop it. What is this nonsense going on? You are not supposed to play like that. The music is going. So why they should play like that? They came, one officer came, the, the Punjabi. He came and told us, Swamiji, Bankar Ji, Dusro Kukar. And you are not supposed to do. They stopped it. 
the moment they left again they put on the <laughs> what type of uh, human being then again i went and told they are not uh, listening that man who was telling swami ji kya karna ye hum log to grihasthi hai bal bachche hain and they are all sanyasins if we go and say harshly to log hame saap de denge they will curse us if we go and ask them the that way because they are sanyasins etc i told we are also sanyasins we can also curse you but no no ram krishna vision sanyasin <laughs> <laughs> He was con- confident that Ram Krishna is going to never do that. I told, okay, so then allow me to stop that. Can I go and stop that? Yes, yes, Swami, stop that if you like. But देख ना कि कोई बुरा ना हो जाए ना कुछ नहीं होगा. Then I went and told, I stop it right now. Or otherwise, I am going to break this on your head. <laughs> They stopped it. <laughs> So it's like this only. That some people are always they're thinking that even they know that they're breaking the rule, even that they are afraid, thinking they are sannyasi, they may curse them. No, even if they curse them, they let them do. But this is my duty. I should say you cannot. We are lacking in that. The because clear idea is not there. Let them give hundred and one curses. Nothing is going to happen because they are they are doing nothing. It's not so easy to be, give the curse even. Hmm. Wow. Very good. Okay then. Any other question? Oh, we have. Now one was Siddhartha. Another was. Siddhartha. He is Utkarsh. 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 Yeah. Now this. So my question is. Um, Is about uh, your, your thoughts on uh, discipline in um, in and, and and how it relates to spirituality. So, in your talk, you were saying that um, it's important to keep reading uh, scripture in order to sharpen your mind. So, so in that sense, in what are your thoughts on how people should structure their uh, meditation practice? Like in in concrete terms, kind of like should they meditate daily for 20 minutes or so and things like that, and and kind of in the U.S. for example, what are some types of cultural influences that you think are uh, to be avoided or could be damaging to spirituality? So, what is spirituality? If you know that clearly, then there is no problem. The spirituality is nothing but love, without any selfish motive. Nothing else. Love, without any selfish motive. Sometimes we go and show our love. We give them services, but we expect that they will, in return, give these, these. these. Sometimes the boat. And these and that. So that is very clear. Selfishness with love is not spirituality. But love without selfishness is spirituality. Now, if this is this, what you want to develop? Concentration. Why they talk about meditation? Meditation. Meditation is nothing but the concentration. When you are studying, you are slowly forgetting all around. I have seen the students over here, in uh, some of the uh, the even the it's called that uh, um, outlets, uh, Starbucks, uh, Starbucks and all. They are sitting over there studying, all round people, but they are constantly agog with that and computer doing. And I saw that what they are actually doing. I'm not supposed to, but they glanced. I saw no seriously studying, not that so observing the movie and nothing like that. Seriously studying. That is also meditation. So once you tell your mind that I am going to do this and putting over that, slowly you are forgetting your environment, your body, and everything. Your mind is 
pouring on that, that's called meditation. Now, this particular force of your mind, if you put on a good thing, say God, spirituality, religion, love, then you will get back those things. But when you are giving it on, maybe the subject of physics or chemistry, you know, you'll be successful in physics and chemistry. But you won't get the peace in your mind because after some time, if you go out and you see the uh, many other physicists are there and you are thinking that as a physicist I am going to get this uh, the, the success you don't get, then you are frustrated. So like this it will happen. But in spirituality you are giving love without any expectation. So there is only joy and nothing else. So if you put in that mind, but it is impossible, why you know? Because of the selfishness, it is in every drop of our blood. How to go out of that? Scripture. That's why I was telling, even if you read one page scripture every day, that will, at the back of your mind, go on inspiring you, giving you energy, and they will say, all these things that you see is nothing but God. When I am helping a person, I am helping God. But that is the reason one should study the scripture. But of course, all the time, if it is not in a proper direction, nothing happens. Suppose in a classroom there are 20-25 boys, one or two, they are becoming first and second. Why not all? Because understanding. Suppose in the medical, in every year so many doctors are passing out. Are they all the same type of doctors? No. Why? Because his understanding. Understanding a subject and then expressing that, it is everywhere. In the monks also, there are so many monks are there. All of them, they are trying to go to God. But their understanding, so that makes them different. So sometimes someone was telling, is there, I told, oh, he's a very good monk. Was a monk is all good. And no, who said? <laughs> <laughs> no. There'll be some people putting on the garb of the monk, but he's a cheater. He's just using this garb to cheat people. And like that, there'll be some who is having his own conception is not clear and he is going to give the instruction to others will also create problem. Recently one boy is going on he was studying in the college he was supposed to become the the graduate and uh, he lost his mental balances it is a great problem. So he contacted me and all that and what happened? Three years he was practicing meditation online instruction. Oh. Somebody was giving the online instruction, he was following that and practicing meditation and the result is he lost his mental balances. Mm -hmm. The fellow who from there who was giving, he, he never knew. So the teachers also depend. So one must be very very clear, uh, clever, intelligent. So what exactly I am going to accept and how much I will accept? And then only they will go. That's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said in his Bengali, Bhakta hobi, buka hobi can. You should be a devotee, but why should you be a fool? You must be intelligent enough to understand. Okay then? Actually, yeah, another question. I have one question that uh, what is the difference between uh, Bhava Samadhi and Nirvikalpa Samadhi? Oh. Uh, and uh, Nirvikalpa Samadhi, I think mind is not involved, right? Bhava Samadhi is it involved in mind? No. Uh, see, yes. see, uh, mm. see that Nirvikalpa, Ni means negative. Ni is not having anything. So no kalpa, kalpa means object. So no kalpa, no object, 
but your mind is concentrated. So that is called nirbhi kalpa samadhi. The samadhi means concentration. But on what I will keep my mind? Consciousness. And that is toughest thing to do. So very few people can understand what is nirvi kalpa samadhi. Now bhava samadhi, sabhi kalpa samadhi, there are different sabhi kalpa, ni kalpa, sa kalpa. Sa means with. Now I take the form of Lord Shiva. Now Lord Shiva is sitting and the Ganga is flowing from the head all around the beautiful snow and he is really a wonderful God and slowly, slowly you are going over there forgetting where you are sitting, what is your body the completely you are transformed into that thought that is called Sabikalpa your mind is full of joy but you are taking the help of something, some object on which you are concentrating now bhava, you are not taking the any figure, any personality, but you are taking the bhava, some idea. And in that bhava, you are just merging. Bhava means something, some idea has come and you are thinking that it is going to happen like this, happen like this, happen. In that bhava, you are, suppose you think I'm, I have gone to heaven and gods are there and you are just also moving around. That's called bhava, bhava samadhi. Sometimes when I am flying, there is all the cloud below, white cloud, nothing is there. I just imagine maybe the, the god, goddesses, they are all living over here. And I can see, imagine the Ganesha is playing or the Krishna, the, like that, like that. That's called Bhava Samadhi. And when you go into that, it's called Bhava Samadhi. There was the one lady, she used to meditate, constantly pray. She was a widow, but she wanted to become mother. Now in our country, a child widow has a terrible life. And slowly, slowly, she realized that. One day she saw that Krishna is playing and just as a you know, the little the boy, naughty boy, playing over here and do her, touching this, touching that. As a mother, she got up from the meditation seat and started chasing the boy, even <laughs> beating him, the God. But she forgot that that is the God she was meditating for last 50 years. That's called Bhava Samadhi. In that wonderful imagination. It is not imagination, it is a reality. But in the bhava, it is not one particular object, but the whole thing. Savikalpa, nirvikalpa and bhava. This bhava samadhi is easy to practice. Yeah. Okay.